Welcome back to Miles Edgeworth Investigations. I'm Luigi Ben Cesar Woody. <sighs> We're getting to the climax of this case. We're almost there. What oh, case here? Okay. What are you doing here? Oh, hello, mister. I'm still investigating. But the object you're looking for is already... Okay. Don't mind. You can continue with your investigation. Okay. You got it. Detective Bad? Haven't we already found what you were looking for? It means I can keep her in the dark just a little longer. And a little faster. Oh? You're more sympathetic than I thought. I've been waiting for you, Edward. I've also been waiting for the moment we can finally lay this case to rest. <laughs> <laughs> the moment in which we can finally lay this case to rest? Wasn't that when we placed our gumshoe under arrest? <laughs> I think we've more than solved this case already. <laughs> Don't you? We'll see. It all depends on whether or not your logic holds. Oh. I see we even have a viewer in the gallery. And why even Mr. Bad is here? A view in the gallery? I'm highly just a bystander. I have a duty to see this case through to the end. No matter how it turns out. Oh, is that right? Anyway, I thought you might like to hear what I slaved away to find out. I've taken statements from every single person's movements during this time when our suspect was in the hallway. I also confirmed that there was no possible route of escape from lobby number two. Therefore, the killer must without a doubt be Detective Gumshoe. And that's all you have? Yeah, that's all there is to my conclusion, in this case. Sorry, but I beg to differ. In the trial, there was always time for a rebuttal, and we are standing in a court of law. It'd be more than appropriate to follow the rules of court. In this case, don't you think? <laughs> Absolutely like a rookie to think such a thing. But all right, I'll play along and give you a proper testimony. If my logic is correct, then I've already won. All I have to do now is prove it by showing who the real killer is. Anyway, Sans the suspect, and everyone Sans the suspect has an alibi from when the gun went off. Furthermore, he errs around the crime scene involving invest the investigators, right? I have also confirmed that there's no possible escape route from lobby number two. Which leaves us with only one sh unshakable conclusion. Detective Gumshoe is the killer! <sighs> now that you have your testimony, I expect a good rebuttal, Edward. <laughs> but of course, there's no need to confront her logic head-on right now. I should instead focus on drawing out any trump cards she has up her sleeves. Everyone stands a suspect has an alibi for when the gun went off. Hold it. The suspect. But I thought the detective gumshoe's alibi has already been proven. <laughs> Are you joking, Ezra? I assure you this is no joke! Look, I know you heard from the judge earlier that the detective was in the hallway with Mr. Faraday's daughter eating a Swiss roll. Yeah, that's correct. But see, that was 20 minutes after before the real gunshot went off, right? And the problem is, there's no one else who can corroborate what he did since the snacking. Huh. I see she's done her research well. Which means that I should focus on drawing out whatever trump cards she's withholding. Furthermore, the areas around the crime scene have all been thoroughly investigated, right? Hold it. Whether they have been thoroughly investigated or not is for me to decide. <laughs> Scratched eyebrows and lines, your forehead are back! <laughs> Anyway, even if you believe it hasn't been exhaustive, the crime scene lobby, lobby number two has no way out other than the hallway Detective Gumshoe was standing in. And because he claimed to be there, that makes him the only possible suspect. But isn't it also possible that someone has escaped through the window and into the garden? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first piece everyone, everyone looks silly! The police aren't a bunch of lazy bums. They looked in every possibility, you know. 
Isn't that right, Mr. Bad? Yeah. Wasn't a scrap of evidence to suggest someone used one of the leaves. It also weren't any footprints in the courtyard garden. I suppose they really did check everything that could be relevant to the case. It also confirmed there's no possible escape room lobby number two! Are you absolutely positive that there's no possible escape routes of escape? Of course, I'm sure. And why are you so certain? This is a courthouse, the place where criminals are brought to be judged. If there are any escape route, I'm sure any every criminal will be using it to escape. It's just common sense. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth! I suggest you use a bit more of it in the future! Hmm. Duh! Which leaves us with only one shakable conclusion. Detective Gumshoe is the killer! You may think it's unshakable, but to me, there are still too many unanswered questions. For example, who was it that placed the gun in Mr. Faraday's hand? <laughs> You're the only one still wondering that! Detective Gumshoe probably had no idea which hand Mr. Faraday used to write with. Even if you know someone, it doesn't mean you'll know which the hand they write with, right? I mean... I certainly don't care about that sort of thing. <laughs> I'm not about to let her get a rise out of me with such a flippant statement. I suppose we've re finally reached the end now. I already have my trump card ready. All that remains is to play it. Before I do, I think I should inquire a little more, a little something about her argument. You said earlier that you confirmed the alibis of every person other than the suspect. However, I don't recall either Francisco or myself speaking with you on that subject. Ah, but they were witnesses. For you, there was your mentor who gave you an alibi. I see. As a little missy, <laughs> she claims to clear the courtroom during the recess. <laughs> she was stopped by the security guard the door of the hallway. <laughs> she gave him quite a whipping for that, so I heard. Mm. I'm the daughter of Manfred von Karma, and I will not be forcibly stopped by a guard or a bailiff for anyone else. Wait, so basically, the only reason Francisca bothered to show up today was because she found out that I was to be the replacement prosecutor? By the way, Miss Yu, what about everyone's alibis before Detective Gumshoe was assigned to the guard duty? What about them? Have you looked into what people were doing during that time, that span of time? <laughs> what a kind of idiot you take me for. Doesn't matter when the killer went into lobby number two, at the time we heard the gunshot, at the time Mr. Bad and I arrived at the scene, when we dashed to lobby number one, the only person who could have committed the crime was Detective Gumshoe. Yes, let's talk about when you and Detective Bad heard the gunshot, shall we? I suppose that if we go by your logic, the Detective Gumshoe was the only one. However, what if the crime had occurred at an entirely different time than when the gunshot you heard went off? What then? The gunshot was a trap meant to manipulate our perception of when the crime took- Sadly, your explanation is very lacking, Edward. The gunshot we heard in lobby number one, can't explain how it could have been fabricated? I already did. With this videotape! The tape? Yes, it's exactly what you think it is. This is the surveillance tape of Mr. Rowe the prosecution presented in today's trial. This is found loaded on the video player of lobby number two. That was connected to the large television that it that had its volume turned up all the way. You can't honestly mean that the sound we heard was the gunshot from the video. Ah, but I do! Which leads me to the next point. The murders occurred much earlier than anyone heard the gunshot! That's the only thing that I can give me think of, too. After committing double homicide, the killer took the surveillance video out from Faraday's evidence bag, turned the television's volume all the way up, and left the video to play. If played from the beginning, it would take 30 minutes for the gunshot sound to come on. And since we are now now know the method of time manipulation is possible, it opens up the possibility that the killer is someone other than Detective Gumshoe. Objection. Sound sounds of a television doesn't amount to much here. But of course, Mr. Prosecutor Edgeworth and little Miss Von Karma already knew that much from the very beginning, right? Of course we knew. Didn't we, Miles? Yes, of course. We knew that the soundproof quality of the courthouse's rooms. Of course, I'm not about to admit we have no idea until a little while ago. 
That's right, and if the room is soundproof, then we should have not been able to hear it. And yet, we heard the gunshot clear as day. And? And? That, that's it! End of story! Hmm, <laughs> but it's not. How should I explain why she was able to hear the gunshot in the soundproof room? The window was open! There is actually one common point between lobby number one and lobby number two. And it is that despite the fact that both rooms have air conditioners installed, a window was open in each! Now we know that the window in lobby number two was opened by the killer. However, a window in lobby number one was also opened. Objection! <laughs> it's probably just coincidence they're both open at the time. Objection! Objection! It was no mere coincidence, I assure you. Why was the window open in lobby number one? The answer is that a certain person did something to cause the window to be opened. The person who triggered that action. The pers that person is the real guilty party. The real killer in this double murder is none other than Callisto Yu! Miss Callisto Yu, I hereby formally indict you to the murder of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. What? You indict me? Are you serious, Miles? Why don't you think she's the killer? I don't understand her motive just yet, but of course I'm serious. Because she's the only one who could have done it. Well, Miss Yu, do you still feel like laughing now? <laughs> of course I do, Edward. My argument must not be tight enough yet. Although I never thought things would spiral into this. But I have to have you know I'm enjoying this dance quite a bit. I guess this means it's time for my own battle now, right? Then go ahead. The floor is yours. You argue that the window was opened. However, do you have proof that it was I who did that? Furthermore, do you have proof that the tape was used in committing the crime? Frankly, I'm shocked that you were going this far around accusing people of murder like this. Especially with logic as full so full of holes as yours. This is where we really start. I mustn't let my guard down for even a second or the truth will blow away. Now is the time to put the, pa the patented Von Karma perfect proof to the test. You argue that the window was open. However, do you have proof that it was I who did that? Evidence? All I need to do is have, is have some prints analyzed and we know straight away. Hm. Be my guest. She sounds as though she has the room to maneuver. Which means, even if we were able to lift fingerprints, they'd only point to someone else. But why that someone else was forced open a window? What's the logic? Why don't I try presenting that piece of evidence? I'm gonna lose. <laughs> What's wrong? The scrunched eyebrows, the lines in your forehead, they're all back! More importantly, are you going to be okay not running a fingerprint analysis? Yes, I'll be fine. Oh, well in that case, I'll just continue on my testimony, alright. Furthermore, do you have proof that the tape was used in committing the crime? I thought I'd just prove that it was. Sure, you proved that the tape was there at the scene of the crime. However, that doesn't prove that it was actually used in said crime. Unfortunately for you, Miss Yu, the fact that the tape was there at the crime scene is in itself very important. How so? <laughs> By the very existence of that tape at the crime scene, it proves the possibility that, a, that the wind of the crime could have been fabricated. And that possibility alone renders all alibis and witness reports irrelevant. Basically, it means that we need to re-examine every person's movements again. Whether the tape was used in the crime or not, that we can, that we can re-evaluate afterwards. <laughs> so in conclusion, you're admitting that you can't prove that it was at this point. Frankly, I'm shocked at you for going around accusing people of murder like this. Even if you're shocked, that is no concern to me. I do things my own way. Oh. I see that you're not laughing for a change. Because I'm shocked. Again, you being shocked is of no concern to me. Let's continue with the testimony. <laughs> All right, but let me say just one thing. You shouldn't go around accusing people. Especially with logic so full of holes as yours. The holes in my logic? Where? Because it was you who opened the window! <laughs> I'm sure you've seen this before, haven't you, Miss You? <laughs> Edgeworth, I never knew you into wearing that kind of perfume. It's not exactly what I'd recommend for boys, you know. What? This isn't mine. 
That's right, it's mine. And I received it from Detective Bad, you see. Miss Yu, you can pretend all you like, but we know that at least this much for sure. That this bottle of perfume was given to Detective Bad by you. <laughs> but it gets really, really strong really fast. So what about the perfume? While you were in lobby number one, you made a big show of spilling some of this perfume. That's according to Detective Bad. <laughs> oh, I know. You also knew that if you'd spill it, you would naturally move to open a window. Objection. Come now, I've already told you that it's all just a big coincidence. After we opened the window in lobby number one, I just left it open, you know? So maybe it was just dumb luck that we heard the gunshot through the window. Objection. That timing of when you were going to spill the perfume is something you could control. And that the most important fact with this case is when people were able to hear the shot. Furthermore, it would have been pointless if you didn't have an alibi for yourself at the time. You mean... Miss Yu, you were the one who called Detective Bad in the lobby number one. When you saw him bring Detective Gumshoe into the hallway, is that correct? All of today's premeditated events could only have been thought up by you, Miss Yu! <laughs> you accuse me of murder on the fact that I spilled a little perfume? Well, allow me to say this much. I couldn't have killed Mr. Faraday. Will you care to testify as to why? <laughs> Looks like I've had a lot of fun today. Really. But I grow weary of this game of cat and mouse. Let's make this the last testimony and wrap this up. Absurd case once and for all. Let's begin. Accusing someone of murder over a spilled bottle of perfume is just a bit over the top. But I suppose forgery is evident. of evidence is to be expected of a disciple of Von Karma. In any case, it simply could not have been me who killed Mr. Faraday. After all, I don't even know where the knife was that he used to kill him came from. Miles' testimony is flawless. Yes, but no matter what sort of trick she may try to pull, she won't escape me. And if I'm lacking in information, I'll just draw it out of her. Accusing someone of murder over a spilled bottle of perfume is a bit over the top. Hold it. I think I've already explained the significance of that earlier. You only confirmed that I did spill some perfume. But that's all. That you could accuse of me of murder based on a simple spill. Don't you dare complain when I sue you for defamation of character. <laughs> You do as you like, but as for me, I believe. You believe? I believe that you are the true culprit of this case. <laughs> you're my you're enthusiastic. Of course, I should have guessed. But I suppose forgery of evidence is to be expected of a disciple of Von Karma. Hold it. I formally request that you det desist on your attack against my mentor. Yes, or we'll sue you for defamation. <laughs> All I'm doing is telling you the truth. Well, maybe more like spreading gossip. Although, your adamant denials are, shall we say, just adding fuel to the fire. How dare you! Say just a thing! Calm down, little girl. Don't let her get to ya. <sighs> oh, did you have to go ruin my fun? <laughs> shall I continue? In any case, it simply could not have been me who killed Mr. Faraday. Hold it. And why exactly could you not have killed him? <laughs> I was just about to testify to that! And you're such an impatient man! <laughs> not really in that, you know, as we're... <laughs> you prefer preferences of no bearing on what is at hand! <laughs> Feeling a little uncomfortable, are we? Mm. Objection. Miss you! You will desist on this tomfoolery and turn your testimony! And Miles, if you're going to lose your cool, then I won't show you any mercy. <clears throat> Sorry. Miss Yu, please continue with your testimony. Sure. As I was saying, I couldn't have possibly killed Mr. Faraday. After all, I don't even know where the knife that was used to kill him came from. Hold it. At this rate, she will inevitably escape. But if she really was the one who killed Mr. Faraday, then she must have known about the existence of the knife. I'm sorry, Miss Yu. Maybe you weren't aware. 
However, the knife that was used to kill Mr. Faraday was taken from his evidence bag. Miles! What do you think you're doing? <laughs> I'm drawing the truth out of her. That's what I'm doing. Huh? But I recall a knife being presented at the trial, trial earlier today. Well, I suppose that's because the evidence was something Mr. Faraday hadn't yet, had yet to use. <laughs> so that's what you're trying to do! Look, why don't you cut it out with the lies? I've already figured it out. I already figured you out. There was no knife inside Mr. Faraday's evidence bag. The only evidence he had yet to present was the key to Yatagrasu had sent. And unless a key can magically turn into a knife, you should really don't have a leg to stand on. <gasps> Did you really think you could trap me? Come now, let's be honest. I never intended to do such a thing. It was all a misunderstanding on my part. In any case, I wonder if you might append what you just said in your testimony. Sure, <laughs> why not? I'll even say it as many times as you like. There was a key in his evidence bag, but you can't kill anyone with a simple key. Hold it. Miss Yu, I would just like to confirm something with you one more time. Oh? What about what's going on happening to Tekka Gumshu after this? I don't need to ask you about that, because he isn't the killer. <laughs> Looks like the number of wrinkles on your forehead has increased yet again. <laughs> Not issue aside, Miss Yu, I'd like to ask you about what's inside the bag. You sure it was the Yatagrasu's key, correct? <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Which is why I'm completely baffled as to where this knife could have came from. I think I just spotted the road to a perfect victory. Finally, it would appear that you revealed your true identity, Miss Yu. Miles, your final statement. I know. All I have to do now is present that evidence. What is this ominous feeling that I can't shake? Evans his bag. Well, actually, yes, you can. Objection! Miss Yu, I wonder if you might take a look at this photo for me. This is a picture of a key the Autocarasu sent to the police. However, while it may look like a key at the first glance, it, in fact, has a secret ability to transform into a knife. Which means that it was inside... That what was inside Mr. Faraday's bag was both the Autograss's key and the murderous knife! You knew that the key was inside Mr. Faraday's bag, did you not? Yes. Well, with the... Well, with the Autograss's key alone, it's more than possible to kill Mr. Faraday! <laughs> Do you understand now? Just knowing the existence of Yatagrasu's key. I still haven't got a good look at it. Showing it to me from that far away, you could be lying for all I know. You would even now still feign ignorance. <laughs> I'm not feigning anything! But we can't be accusing me of a crime with false evidence now, can we? I mean, Mr. Von Karma, I've heard some very interesting rumors about him. Ah, you mocking my papa? Don't you dare sully the good name of my mentor. Now take a good look. This piece of evidence is more than real. Wow, who knew there was such a trick to this thing? Are you satisfied now? But of course, you knew from the very beginning, didn't you? You knew that the knife and the Yatagrasu's key are one of the same. Otherwise, someone like you, who isn't a member of law enforcement, and who would never have been privy to this trick, would have never known about it to begin with. Furthermore, there's something that the autographs have said to the police. How did you have knowledge as to what it was? <laughs> Actually, I heard it from Mr. Faraday. Just before you dragged Mr. Rell off, he told me. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. He told, also told me the key turning into a knife at the time. But he didn't tell me about how the key actually transforms. What you're saying is simply not possible. Oh, and why not? Because Mr. Faraday himself didn't know about the hidden knife within the, within the key. But within these pages, he mentions nothing about a knife. <laughs> I'm not sure he would have written everything in his organizer, you know. Wouldn't something of this importance be better left to oral communication? Objection! Unfortunately, this is also impossible. 
because Detective Bad didn't know about the knife aspect either. <laughs> what would have been highly classified information, even within the police force, and is, and is something that even the lead detective in this case didn't know, why would Mr. Faraday have felt the need to share such information with the opposition? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess he wouldn't have had much reason to. <laughs> Looks like I gave a pretty lame excuse, huh? <laughs> How can you laugh at a time like this? She probably just realized the flaw in her logic and is actually in a panic over it. But that's not something we need to concern ourselves with. Hmm. I suppose you're right. Miss Yu, I like to state that I also know that you now that you know the real nature of this knife. <laughs> do I do you now? Well you don't why don't you put your money where your mouth is? Show me. Oh I will, and I'll wipe that smile off your face with the time we're through. Time, this is it, the moment of truth. Secret behind the autographer's key. Only one person would have the knowledge of it from the get-go. Who would know from the start the autographer's key could change into a knife? The Yatagarasu! It's only one person who would have known about the dual nature of the, of the key. <laughs> and that is? And that is the person who sent the Yatagarasu's key to the police! That is to say, the Yatagarasu herself. Are you saying that this lawyer is the great thief Yatagarasu? Miss Yu, you used Mr. Rodelor and Mr. Faraday into a trap, didn't you? You, who profess to bear a grudge against criminals, why? Why do something like this? Callisto, you! <laughs> Callisto, you, huh? That's not my real name. Besides, because my real identity is, yes, the great thief Yatakarasu. Let me tell you something, Edward. Mr. Faraday was one difficult man to deal with. For you see, he had discovered my true identity, which is why I had to erase him from the world of law. I made Rel an offer. An acquittal for a little favor in return. All he had to do was accuse Mr. Faraday of being the Yatagrasu in court. But once we entered the recess, Ro was dragged off by Mr. Faraday, which threw my plan into a complete mess. I chased after them and eavesdropped on him through a crack in the door. But that Rel caves in only two things, money and authority. This is all thugs do. I feared my plan was going to be ruined if Mr. Faraday held on to Rel any longer. Plus, if I had let them continue the way they were, I would have been found out. That's why I had no choice. I had to kill both of them. But didn't you say that you despise criminals? <laughs> but I do really? Do I really? You... Have you forgotten about the cage he ate incident too? Maybe. So the woman would... So then, was it your plan to kill Mr. Faraday for the very evidence that you sent? <laughs> well, I had a good idea what Mr. Faraday was going to do. I anticipated that Mr. Faraday was going to prove that Rel wasn't the Yatagarasu. By using this, Yatagarasu's key as evidence, and he would bring it with him. Which is why I thought to use the knife portion. With a weapon that well disguised as this, no one would be the wiser. Because who in the right mind would think something like this could be a weapon? I casually entered lobby number two with the pretext that I had to talk to Mr. Faraday. In order to get in with him, I pretended to be worried about something. He then let me hold the autograph's key, just like that. He never noticed that I changed the key to a knife inside a plastic bag. And he didn't have the chance to take note of the knife that took his life. How could you kill him? I knew him for a long time, you know. At the very least, I thought to give him a quick and painless death. 
But if you killed Mr. Faraday first, there was no need for you to kill Mr. Rell as well. I believe I mentioned why when we placed this gun detective gumshoe under arrest. Something about having accidentally created an eyewitness. And how that led the killer to think about setting them up as as though they'd kill each other. And that trick with the surveillance tape. Yes, I hadn't actually planned to use a gun. The risk was too high that I'd be caught. However, that was when I remembered the existence of that surveillance tape. Which is why I had Rel help me set up the crime scene. After all that was said and done, I rewarded him with all his hard work with a bullet. You! You're the defense attorney, aren't you? How could you? How could you betray your client? <laughs> a client? You want to talk about who's a client and who's first? It was me. I knew the client of the murderer was a... I knew the client and the murderer could not be an embassy staff member. Dead man. You, you ordered a hit job? <laughs> you still haven't figured it out, Mr. Bad. I had dead man killed because he was going to, he was about to give away info of the smuggling ring. Now, who exactly do you think would benefit from such an assassination? I, it, it can't be. You. You're. That's right. I'm a member of the smuggling ring. How could this... You don't mean... You're working with Manny Cochin too, do you? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I guess you'll never know. Katarazu claims to be noble. You're just another cold-blooded murderer. <laughs> That's right, little girl. The Atarazu is just another killer. Be quiet. You. Yatagarasu! You can run to the law, but you'll never escape it. So just humbly accept the judgment of this court. <laughs> hey, Edward. Did you know? The other grass was three legs. Do you know why that is? <laughs> no? Well, let me tell you. It means that the Yatagarasu is more than one razor-sharp way to do our work. <gasps> you really were too naive, Edward. You even handed the Yatagarasu's key right to me without a second thought. Everything may not have gone according to plan, but I'll still gladly take it. <laughs> you mean, the key was your real target? <sighs> and even after I gave you such great advice, didn't I tell you to always keep a good eye on a criminal? Or maybe, or you may regret what comes from your negligence. You two, get down! <laughs> My body, I can't move. Mr. Tiray! You? You all right, Francisca? Perfectly fine, Miles. Her voice is shaking, but it looks like she'll, she's unharmed. Huh? Where did Kay go? The gun, the gun shot. Sorry, it looks like she got away. I called the precinct. They just have a perimeter set up soon. Detective Bad, are you alright? I heard a gunshot! I'm okay. Just got another hole in my jacket. He may say he's fine, but he looks quite shaken. <sighs> One point, the boy. I mean, Mr. Edgeworth, he's Von Karma. Are you too hurt? Uh, I... I am absolutely fine. I am also alright, thanks to Kay. <sighs> Speaking of Kay, where is she? Huh, I don't know. She sort of just disappeared. <sighs> what are looking for? Oh, and, uh, hey. Detective Gumshoe? D yes, sir! Detective Bad, sir! <clears throat> I'm sorry, I doubt it. Don't worry, sir. It's not your fault. I, uh... Well, I lied to you guys, too, after all. I heard about what happened. Okay. Lying while well, giving testimony is still unforgivable. 
But, in this case, you were protecting Kay and her feelings. Looks like you just might have what it takes to be a real detective. Now don't you ever lose that detective spirit, okay? You got it, sir! Pops! Pops? Watch one too many detective dramas recently, haven't you? Wait, a single handedly destroy the cheery atmosphere with one snarky comment. I should get back to this. I swear. I'll catch you if it's the last thing I do. Be careful, Detective Bat. And take care. Thanks. Well, I'm off. Maybe we'll run into each other again Uh, so, uh... Thanks a bunch, pal. You're the best! <laughs> you really did find out the truth behind everything! Yes, well, I'm glad we solved everything before you were taken off to prison. Can't believe how much trouble I caused you in my testimony, Detective Gumshoe. That's no problem, really. <laughs> I mean, I lied too, so I didn't help anything. It's not your fault, Your Honor. Well, even if we didn't have, have his honest testimony, I think that lawyer would have found another way to get you convicted on her behalf. Yeah. I can't believe I was about to get fired during my first week as a detective. Uh, well, so long as you're not fired, you should work hard, give all that you have, and perform your duties well. Oh, and one more thing. Kay left a present for you with me. She did? Oh, what is it? What was it that Kay left for me? The proof of her friendship? None other than the Switch Roll. It's the courthouse special Swiss roll! Can I really have it? Yes, it's a present meant for you, after all. Thanks a bunch! You have no idea how happy this makes you, pal. I'm gonna eat this right now. Sure, go ahead. The Swiss roll that Detective Gumshoe and Kay bought together. While the one Kay saved never reached her father, it would appear that her sentiments have touched the heart of this detective. He's so happy as though it were a welcome back celebration of his own. Well, I was asked by Kane to give it to him. Whew! That's good, pal! I can't believe I got to eat two of these delicious things in one day. It's like I'm a Swiss roll paradise or something. I gotta thank Kane myself. Hey, wait, where is she? He only noticed just now? Was his mind not present when he we discussed her earlier? Detective Bell left to go search for her earlier. Maybe you should go join him. Yeah, you betcha, pal. I'm gonna go help him. Oh, but first! You know what, pal? Actually, I guess I shouldn't be so rude anymore, huh? I'm gonna stick right by your side from now on, Mr. Edwards, sir. I sense nothing but a most troublesome relationship from this ominous statement. We should go home two miles. We have to hurry and report to what happened to Papa. Agreed? Well, I'm afraid we must be going now, Detective. Roger, sir. Don't you worry. I'll investigate the next case we're on real well. I'll, uh, be counting on you. The scent of trouble is definitely in the air. Thus, like a bad dream, my first outing at court came to a disturbing end. A few months later, I was finally able to properly stand in court as a prosecutor. But the detective in charge of the investigation was, as I dreaded, Detective Gumshoe. After that, he became my direct subordinate. I have tried, but words fail to describe the immeasurable suffering he has caused to me. But I suppose that's just how things are. As for the little girl who suddenly disappeared, she's now... So? Do you remember now? Yes. I remember everything. Kay, it's been a while. Kay! Sure grew up a lot! Of course! Thank goodness! I thought you two have totally forgotten about me! You know, I was really worried about you after all that. Where'd you been all this time? Hehe, <laughs> come yet in, no you care. After my father died, I went to go live with my mother's relatives. I lived really far away, so I wasn't really able to come back all that much. Oh, is that what happened? Well, I'm just glad you're alright. Hehe. 
So does it mean it all makes sense now? You betcha it does. Oh, you know what? I was going through my father's bookshelves recently and, uh... Actually, there are still a number of things that don't make sense, Kay. Huh? First of all, why did you come all this way to see me? And second, why are you calling yourself the Yatagarasu? Yatagarasu is Callisto Q, the woman who killed your father. No, you're wrong. The real Yatagarasu was my father. Huh? M Mr. Faraday was the y Yatagarasu? Like I said, I was going through my father's bookshelves recently. And I found a secret diary hidden among his books. I have no regrets in choosing to walk the path of the Yatagarasu. I was written in his diary. And that's how I knew for sure. But that's... That's impossible! What's with that look? You don't believe me? It wasn't just the expression on my face. I clearly said it was impossible just now. Alright then. How do you explain this? It's a way of disarming any security system the user's choosing. Yep. As Little Thief, truth be told, this is the Yatagarasu's greatest secret. And this little gizmo was used by my father. Wow! Mr. Faraday wasn't just a great prosecutor. He was a really great thief, huh? Yeah, my father worked real hard to steal the truth. But he was killed. And then the Yatagarasu was no more. But despite that, the Yatagarasu has been spotted again recently. Someone other than you? Than you? Yeah, Mr. Edgeworth. Take a look at this article! <clears throat> yes, Yatagarasu said the embassy a calling card? Yeah, it means the person's a fake. I'm almost certain Callisto you lady is behind this. Because the real Yatagarasu would never send something like a gaudy card out. But Yatagarasu did send away card along with anything to be publicized. Detective Bad told me some years ago if memory serves. Well, as soon as I heard the news, I all wound up, and I knew I just couldn't let it go. So I searched you out, so that I could obtain the truth behind the Yatagarasu. Because if anyone could help me find it, I'm f I figured it's you, Mr. Edgeworth. So you're saying that I have your father's and Miss Yu's identities backwards? Yeah, because really Yatagarasu is noble to the end. I want to revive the, the real noble Yatagarasu. If I don't, my father will never be able to rest in peace. Okay. Okay. You're so honorable. I don't care what anyone else thinks. I'll always be a cheer on Bell. Even if you are honorable, a thief is a thief. If you're applying to commit a crime, then I'm afraid I can't be a complicit. That's worth. Oh, you guys are not making it easy for me. Who am I supposed to support now? Sedgeworth. What I want from you is not to steal something. What I want is the arrest of the evil of that evil woman. That evil woman? You mean Callisto you? I think it's too hard for me to catch her all by myself. But I thought that since you were able to expose her for who she is, then maybe Please, Mr. Edgeworth, won't you help me? Come to think of it. I do believe I owe you. Huh? Only for what? When Miss Yu made her escape, it was you who saved my life. Furthermore, you helped me with the investigation today. I'm not so rude as to leave favors unrepaid. Then you mean it? Yes. That case has been weighing down my soul ever since that fateful day. Perhaps it's time has come to settle things once and for all. If you don't intend to sully your hands in a crime, then I believe I can help you. Stashworth, thank you! Yeah, <laughs> Stashworth, sir! This is a great king! Yeah, sure is, Gummy. Even though he had completely forgotten about her until just now. <sighs> what is with their chummy relationship? The great thief Yatagarasu. After all that time, the true identity of the thief sank back into the darkness. Burn Faraday, Callisto Yu. And K. Faraday. The phantasmagorically changing identity of the great thief Yatagarasu. And the Yatagarasu's real goal. It would all come to light the day after I made that promise to K. Another case closed. But up next is the final case.
Turn him out ablaze. Right? I'll use this for D. This is Miles Edgeworth, Ace Attorney, Investigations. One case left. Alright. The next episode, we'll be getting to work. Have a great day. See you next time.